Welcome to another episode of Bridging the Gap. Now, as recruiters at Edwards and Finn, we're all too aware of the importance of making a really good impression at interview. But now, of course, there's so much that you can do to make a good impression before you're even interviewed. Here to tell us more about the importance of LinkedIn and optimizing your profile is a self-styled LinkedIn lady, Judy Parsons. Hello and welcome, Hi. Judy. How are you? Hi, I'm very good, Jason. Thank you for inviting me here. Really good to have you. So tell us more. I think it's my dream job being a, a LinkedIn guru. So tell us, how <laughs> did you end up in such a, an amazingly interesting role? Oh, purely by accident and not by design, uh, for sure. Actually, um, I would say that my love affair with LinkedIn actually started on Valentine's Day 2006, which was the day I created a LinkedIn account. And I did what most people do who go on to LinkedIn. There was somebody said, oh, it's really good for jobs. Go on and create an account. And, you know, LinkedIn isn't very intuitive or easy to use or anything like that. And, you know, I did what most people do and just had my job title and company name and things like that. And I didn't really stand out. And I was just like any other marketing manager. Um, and I, as I said, I was a marketing manager for a telecoms company at the time. And my job was generating leads for the sales team. And then... When I went self-employed, I was doing WordPress websites and then somebody said, oh, what about this LinkedIn? And I just realized that LinkedIn is such a fabulous tool for businesses and for sales teams and that you know, nobody was really using it. And then I just became, I started doing LinkedIn training and teaching people how to make the most out of LinkedIn. And somebody once said, oh, you're that LinkedIn lady, aren't you? I went, I love that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and here I am. 10 years on, I'm still doing it. <laughs> How did people get by without LinkedIn? Can you remember? Do you know what? I, I, absolutely, well, we say the same about mobile phones, don't we? And text messages and emails. What did we do before the internet and all that kind of stuff? Um, I think LinkedIn has changed enormously in the power of LinkedIn. And I think as graduates, um, even universities are recognising that LinkedIn actually is a very, very important place for graduates to be to help them find either their first job or their next job or even if they're looking for some uh, work placements and internships and all that kind of stuff I I do quite a bit with the University of Sheffield to help their journalism students on maximizing their LinkedIn profiles my niece is at Newcastle University it was part of her degree to actually create a LinkedIn profile and then she was telling me that she applied for a job and they actually said on the application form, they asked for her LinkedIn profile URL. So, you know, one of the, it is hugely, hugely powerful and useful as a tool to help you go from student life and into, into employment and work. But I think the biggest challenge is that it's, it's understanding what LinkedIn is and how you can use it and not actually doing what LinkedIn tells you it thinks it should do, but using it as you want to use it. Um, and it's one of the things I read an article, it was a couple of years ago now, and it was talking about the five skills that you needed to navigate their workforce throughout the 2020s. And one of them was building your personal brand. And the reason they said that is because um, it's a competitive market, you need to be able to stand out and also employers need to be able to find you online. So it doesn't matter whether it's Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, what you're putting or ever social media, probably that graduates are using. But, you know, what you're doing is that you're putting yourself out there and you are creating an impression uh, about you that employers can go and have a look. Now, the beauty about LinkedIn, of course, is that, you know, there's, more now probably but i'm still creating 32 million profiles on linkedin in the uk alone so all your employers are on linkedin or your recruiters are on linkedin so it's a great place to have a presence so that it gets you found but it's important to understand that it's your professional brand and not your cv so that was a very long-winded answer to the question what did we do without linkedin i don't know but it's really good that we've got it <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I've taken uh, and I've taken you back on this before, uh, but my journey with LinkedIn started about 2017, where I was like a, a lot of people. I was I was on LinkedIn without actually being on LinkedIn. So I had a profile 
I didn't even have a picture. Um, I didn't have um, a bio. I was just kind of there somewhere in LinkedIn space. Um, and then I went on a half day masterclass with you. You taught me how to write a bio. Um, you taught me the importance of having a picture and developing a, a personal brand. And I've, I've never honestly looked back since. Um, and I see that in many of the students today. As recruiters, we're spending about 95% of our lives looking on, on, well, looking for candidates, but specifically on LinkedIn. Um, and in all honesty, if I see a profile without a picture and I'm looking for a graduate to take on a revenue analyst role in revenue management, for instance, I'm more likely to think, well, you don't spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, therefore, why should I message you on LinkedIn? So why... Why is it so important in your opinion to be to be active on LinkedIn as well as kind of have a, a, a good profile? So I think it all starts with why are you on LinkedIn? What is it you want it to do? And I think if I am a graduate and I'm looking for a job, it may not necessarily be important as important to be active. But what I want is a profile that positions me in the brightest and best possible light in front of potential employers and recruiters. So the first and foremost, I don't, I really don't wanna overwhelm people. And I think first and foremost, it's making sure that you have a good profile. Now that does include having a photo, but it's a good photo of you. It's not a, uh, it's not any pets, partners, kids, no, you probably don't have kids, but you know, nights out, no, no hiding behind coffee cups. You want a photo of you smiling, looking professional, looking like the type of person that a, a recruiter like yourself, Jason, or an employer would want to actually uh, employ. Um, and then underneath your photo, underneath you, you've then got your name, and then underneath that is your headline. Now, when I work with the journalism students at Sheffield University, they'll often go, journalism student, University of Sheffield. But that doesn't make you stand out. So you want to be using your headline to say what sort of jobs you want to go for. What is it that you want to do? You want to, you know, um, you might still say it, it's hard as a graduate because you obviously you may not have that previous experience. But you if you're looking to go into hospitality management, if you're looking to go into, uh, you know, front of house, are you going to be looking to more towards the chefing side? You know, what part of hospitality do you want to go into? And you've got 220 characters there to expand on that and say, you know, um, um, you could even say a, hospita a hospitality management graduate looking for my first role as uh, in in a hotel or in a restaurant or wherever it may be that you want to go. So you can you can use that to say what it is you want a job in, that you're open to jobs and I think that's the other really exciting thing about LinkedIn is that you can tell LinkedIn that you are open for jobs. So on your profile, you'll say open to and you can say what jobs you want to do. But don't just say that you are a, you know, student. You need, you can expand on that and talk about, um, you know, you what are you looking for? You're looking for uh, an, your uh, first new role in whatever area of hospitality you want to go into for. So I think it's really important. And this is what I mean about using LinkedIn as a way to position you and help you stand out. Because Jason, I mean, we think about the different jobs that you will obviously be recruiting for within the hospitality sector. There must be hundreds of different jobs. So, you know, you, you would do presumably a search for candidates that would have certain keywords in their profiles that would fit the job description. Um, and so from a, a graduate perspective somebody who's looking for a job I actually would say go and have a look at the job adverts on LinkedIn search for your dream job and have a look at what they're looking for you know what do they say they need what are their skills what would be fantastic and then you can use that to write your profile to make it much more attractive to recruiters and employers who are looking for those candidates to fill those roles so it's just about thinking differently and being more than just a, and it, this doesn't apply to students, of course, it applies to a lot of people, but it's more than just your job title and company name, or it's more than just being, you know, hospitality student at XYZ University or whatever. It's about having much more information on there and, and positioning that headline to say what it is you do and what you want to do and the roles you're looking for. I think one of the things that you said that was really interesting is personal brand. And 
personal brand comes with a little bit of person. I always find that it's intriguing to find out a little bit more about the person behind the corporate mask, I like to call it. Yeah. So LinkedIn has changed over the years, hasn't it? You'll know that it's not just now um, a dry CV that kind of sits on, on LinkedIn for people to have a look at and, oh, yeah, that's great, revenue management, fantastic. Um, it's fine and, I suppose, encouraged really to post about your holidays or where you're going or people like to celebrate with you or commiserate with you or um, in a previous job, I'd always post where I'd been because people are nosy. They like, they like inherently, they like to look at where, where you've been and what you're doing. And I think by the same token, it's becoming more and more important to employers is to find out about personality. I think personality and fit within the team now has much more parity against um, skills and education. People like to know where someone will fit within the team and whether they'll change the dynamic. Uh, would you agree with that? Well, so you'd know more about that, Jason, because anyway, I don't actually deal with the recruitment side side of things. So, you know, what would a recruiter be looking for? What would an employer be looking for? Um, and it's understanding that if you're in the if you're in the market for a new job, you you know what I would be doing personally is looking at right what would uh, I what is my dream job what jobs do I want and when I look at those jobs and I research those jobs either on whatever you know job agencies or as I say I'd use LinkedIn to look for those jobs I'd look at what are they asking for but you're right you know you still need some personality but it has to be a fine line you know because there's more to going you know, oh, we're off down the pub now. You know, it's a, your personal brand. It's your professional brand. People will make an impression from you. So what's important for your for potential employers and recruiters to know about you? So I think if you do things like if you run marathons or if you do things for charity, um, absolutely. Do you manage um, or have you been involved in a group at university? Do you, um, these are all um, external uh, skills that you can use and maybe apply um, as part of your role. So all those sorts of things are really important. I think the one thing that's really key for me um, is that you don't see LinkedIn as a CV. The problem with LinkedIn is that it drives you down that CV route. And what you'll have, what will happen, especially, well, not just with graduates, but it's easy for graduates to then use CV type language on their profiles so they'll go um I don't know if I can do any graduate one but let me let me I know what I probably put on my profile when I first created it when I was employed I would have put something like an experienced marketing manager with demonstrable history in delivering campaigns that's just boring you know there's things like you know I work on my own initiative or I work great in a team um, you know, uh, these are all just any kind of boring CV style profile statements, sorry, any boring CV style statements won't do your personal or professional brand any good and will just make you hidden. So it's about using your profile. So don't think of it as a CV. And please, 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 please do not upload your per your personal CVs to LinkedIn. That is not the place to have them. There's a lot of personal information on those CVs. So I've seen uh, students, certainly from Sheffield um, University, the ones that I've worked with, where they've uploaded their CVs. And, you know, they've got address on their date of birth, telephone numbers, all this information that, you know, a scammer is an identity theft is, would be brilliant. And it's not the place for your CV. LinkedIn is not your CV. LinkedIn is a place there to tell people, why do you want to work in hospitality? What is it that you're passionate about? Why did you decide to go down that route? What have you done either at school or in college that demonstrates your personality, as you were saying before, and your skills? You know, have you run a club? Have you organized something? Do you work for a charity? Um, do you work part time anywhere else? Have you got any customer service skills, maybe in a retail? You know, it's bringing all of these things together to kind of demonstrate actually you're more than just a, a student looking for your first job. Fantastic. And Judy, have you got any final tips that you can give anyone to either optimize or anyone that's starting out on LinkedIn like I was five or six years ago and doesn't have a clue where to start? How would you how would you start things off? 
so I'm not going to lie, Jason, it's the hardest thing to do is write about yourself. So what I would do is I always write my uh, profiles in a Word document first. And so ask yourself, if you write something, ask yourself the so what question. Could anyone else, all these other thousands of graduates who are looking for the same role, say the same thing? Does this make me different? Have what else have I done that would demonstrate the kind of person that I am and the skills that I can bring to the table? Um, and then maybe get feedback. If you you can change your profile in an instant, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So you could put something up there, start playing with it, put something up there, and then get you know somebody to sense check it for you. You know. Um, a lecturer or somebody you trust, a friend, maybe, you know, an older friend or somebody who's in work already, who, who does already maybe work in the area that you want to get in, let them look at it and go, what do you think? Get them to sense check it. And you don't have to write war and peace. There's quite a lot of space on LinkedIn. Um, but you don't have to uh, fill it all. The less is more. So just put what you think is most important and your personal brand or professional brand, I use it interchangeably, but that's going to grow and evolve as you grow and evolve. And as you get, you get your first step on the ladder and then you may go for promotion and promotion. So what you do now as a graduate in five years time, maybe 10 years time even, is not going to be relevant. So it doesn't, you know, your you, the way you went to school even now probably isn't relevant unless it's, you know, where you did it if, you did a university degree that can go on, but um, you know you just need your most highest uh, education on there. You don't need to have everything on there. Um, and just think about it's it's about keywords. So LinkedIn is is a two way kind of street, if you like. You can use it to go and find jobs and tell employers and recruiters that you're open for jobs, but equally they can find you. So you need to be really clear and what roles you want and put that in your profile put it in your headline and put it in your about section and say why do you want to be a chef what made you want to go into hospitality management you know what why do you want to do that role um and if you can just say a little bit more and then like you say maybe talk about some of the things that you do outside of work or outside of college that demonstrates those skills Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Judy. It's been uh, been an absolute pleasure. So how can people, and I know you're going to say on LinkedIn, but I'm sure you wouldn't <laughs> mind people getting in touch with you to ask advice. And you certainly helped me quite a lot. I can testify that your, your masterclasses and um, the things that you do to support students and anyone really on, on LinkedIn, I, I I can give you a five out of five for um, for your teaching. So, um, but yeah, you, you don't mind people getting in touch with you on LinkedIn and... I don't, I mean, might be worthwhile. I do have recording of this, the one hour session that I do for Sheffield University, Jason, if you'd like me to share that with you, because that actually gives people, it's, it's obviously presentation and it shows people how to write your profile, how to look for jobs, and some top tips on personal branding. So that might be probably more worthwhile for graduates, certainly, who are looking for their first foray into the whole world of employment. Fantastic. But, so, oh, yes, obviously we'll, on LinkedIn. <laughs> Best yeah, place we'll, to pop the, we'll pop that in the, uh, in the comments below. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. My absolute pleasure, Jason. And that's all we've got time for. So please like and follow and and have a look who's on the show next time.